Netflix has been really building up their slate of animated series lately, which has been wonderful to see, and one of their best shows premiered in September, titled Hilda. Based on a series of graphic novels by Luke Pearson, there's something lovable and relaxing about this show, and yet also with the necessary stakes. It's an incredibly imaginative show that takes full advantage of the Netflix format to create individual stories that also fit into the overall saga being told. Hilda centers around the titular girl, a young adventurer with a penchant for exploring and understanding the many creatures that inhabit the world. Eventually, her mother decides it's time they move from the forest to the big city, and we see Hilda bring her brand of optimism and ideas to Trollberg. The series could have easily centered on the fish-out-of-water concept of a wilderness girl in a new environment, but Pearson and the other writers seem more intent in showing her applying what she learned in her previous home to this new one. From the first episode, Pearson has created an incredible array of amazing creatures. There's so much imagination in each one, and it's clear how much thought he put into their backstory. A lot of episodes revolve around Hilda coming across a creature and learning about their motivations and feelings and what makes them tick. The elves in this world, for example, have an obsession with paperwork and filling out the proper forms and documents. In addition to being a funny idea, it also works in developing the mindset of these elves. One of the most endearing creatures who occasionally appears is a woodman who is equally wise and also kind of gets on the character's nerves. Although it's not just the fantastic creatures that bring the series to life, there's also a group of teenagers who get their kicks out of giving children nightmares and forcing others to join in through peer pressure. Checks out. One character who occasionally pops up and leaves a memorable impression is a mysterious librarian who throws hints at Hilda and her friends when they go in search for something. Is she a witch, like her clothing suggests? The show never dives that deeply into it, and that lack of explanation works. There's also a good friendship formed between Hilda and her two new city friends, David and Frida. This feels like a genuine friendship, with the three teaming up on these adventures, but we also see the friction there and the arguments that children might be prone to have. There's an episode where Frida gets into an argument with the other two, and surprisingly, it's not resolved and wrapped up at the end. That's one of the beauties of the Netflix format. Since the season's episodes are released all at once, and people can watch them at their own pace and leisure, their family shows can have these overarching plots and not feel the need to wrap everything up in a single episode. One thing that really surprised me about Hilda was how subversive the show is. In the second episode, we see Hilda having to face off against the Prime Minister of Elves, elected on an anti-immigration platform. That's not me looking too much into it. That is exactly what happens. One of my favorite episodes is one that explores Hilda's school and her confusion at how conformist the whole system is and the way she draws the ire of one of her teachers for being outspoken. That's one of the best things about the character. She has that genuine curiosity about the world around her and this want to find out about things that others might shun. And through that, Pearson and the team behind the show able to tackle these themes and messages. Another major part of the series' charm is the animation. There's something warm and inviting about the color palette and use of shapes in Hilda. Yet, when there are genuine stakes, the colors change to reflect that. There's so many shots of the landscape that one can hang on a wall. The character designs are delightful, too. One of my favorite things the animators do is whenever we see the characters from far away, the eyes become like dots. It's a clever technique. There's certainly a cuteness factor, especially with Hilda's dear fox twig, but not in a way that feels desperately trying to generate awes. There's also a wonderful fluidity to the character animation, whether it's the various creatures or the humans. With all the running and jumping and flying Hilda does throughout the show, it feels especially important Netflix spend the money necessary for her to pull that off, and I'm glad they did. Kudos to the animators at Mercury Filmworks for their superb work in bringing this world to life, too. A lot of people have described the series as the British Gravity Falls, and while I can understand the comparison as both shows deal with adventurous youngsters who discover a wide range of imaginative and mythological creatures in that town, 
I feel Hilda manages to stand up in its own. And watching the series itself, I did not find myself frequently comparing it to Gravity Falls or other animated shows of that ilk. It's an incredibly endearing series, and in this day and age, it's always wonderful to see a piece of entertainment centered around an optimistic protagonist just seeking to brighten others' days. Whether it's a parental figure, good friends, a homeless house spirit, or a woodman. There's always a place for big-hearted media, and Hilda is a great addition to the frequently expanding Netflix catalog. They have already announced a second season to be coming soon, and I, for one, will definitely be viewing it. See you next time.